reading, writing and arithmetic. Those are the core lessons many of us remember from our school days. And while discipline in class wasn't always fun, for the vast majority it was never an option. But now a surprising number of parents are opting out of that educational norm altogether. Instead, they've decided to cater directly to their child's interests, whatever they may be. Well, usually what happens is I'm doing something and they're like, wait, shouldn't you be in school? I'm like, well, I don't go to school. And they're like, what? So you're homeschooled? And I'm like, not exactly. Professional educators, for the most part, are decidedly unimpressed. It's probably one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. It is, I would say, self-directed, consent-based learning outside of school, generally. That last one is a, a negotiable. Um, because I think really the, the thing with unschooling to me that's most important is well, for one thing, it's just breaking down the, the idea that there is a division between life and learning, that these are sort of separate spheres. And instead, it's just, you know, seeing that that learning is ever present and that it's, you know, it's part of life. But the, the sort of thing I like to focus on with unschooling is that it's really the, the self-directed part is what what people want to, to make of it so that there's not really a, a single way that unschooling looks or has to be it can be more or less structured based on the the desires and needs of of the learner unschooling first of all I think is different for every person and every family but um, what I usually tell people is that um, I think it's the uh, the ability to have the freedom to choose what you want to learn how you want to learn it and when you want to learn it um, so just choosing what's important to you and um, the autonomy to be able to go out and pursue that. And they learn as if they've graduated college, I like to say. So once you graduate college, you continue learning till you die. But most people never think about that. They just think about when they were in school. But that's how unschoolers learn is as if they have already gotten past that schooling point and are now just learning everything they want to learn when they want to learn it. To get ready for her spelling lesson, Susan makes sure she has the right book on her desk, plenty of paper for writing, and a pencil that has a good sharp point. Lois didn't bother to think of these things ahead of time and look at the trouble she is in the room now. I went to traditional school as a child, uh, homeschooled a little bit with curriculum. And then in high school, uh, I floated back and forth and my mom, I think without knowing was unschooling me. Um, and then we, when we decided to homeschool our children, we did try a few curriculums, Waldorf, uh, Charlotte Mason, um, and, and nothing really fit well, the relationship wasn't working. And so we just kind of fell into this I don't know, lifestyle. And then we realized there were people doing the same thing and there was a name for it. And uh, we found a whole community. Um, it was something that my mother was always kind of drawn to. I think she, she knew uh, about homeschooling. I think even about unschooling um, in particular before I ever went to school. But um, there was some disagreement between my parents and, you know, sort of feeling that, that maybe give school a try. And so I, I attended half a year of kindergarten and it just, I, it was okay. It was, uh, you know, this was some 25 years ago. And at that time there was still half day kindergarten where I live. So it wasn't even a full day. Um, and I was, I was pretty neutral on it, but there, uh, there ended up just being issues with, uh, with the administration and with uh, some other students. And it just, sort of a, a I think was a, a negative experience more on my parents side of of things and they went okay you know what let's just try homeschooling and like I say I was always you know as a, a little kid I was pretty neutral on it so I was fine going and I was I was fine leaving um, so that's sort of where it started and just kind of grew from there. Unschooling came into our lives um, not on purpose it sort of just organically happened we started out um, in public school and 
I decided after a few years that um, we were going to homeschool. So we did virtual school for a year, realized that wasn't quite the right path for us. Um, I, they attended a micro school for a semester and we were missing out on a lot of the homeschooling activities that we did because of the two days for the micro school. And I decided to pull them out and I was gonna just see what happened. And then our family decided um, to move because of my husband's job and we packed everything up in the house. So we didn't have all those traditional tools that we had been using. And we just kind of got into a groove. Um, everybody was happy and thriving. And I realized that we didn't need to have a formal program and for the kids to continue learning. And I'd never even heard of the word unschooling. I just started researching um, alternative forms of education and I came upon the term and I realized that's what we were doing. <laughs> so we just kept at it. They're not bad boys, these dropouts, not delinquents, not hoods, not yet, that is. They may not even be stupid or backward or lazy. The days are very different. Like, um, just we do what we want, basically. Uh, together or uh, alone, <laughs> we go to, um, you know, to, to the swimming pool or we go to cinema or uh, we go to, um, to some other event or we go to, uh, to a trip or we watch movies. Um, they do uh, i work um, they they do anything they want uh, online <laughs> they spend i think they spend quite a quite a lot of time online playing online games or uh, chatting with friends watching youtube or tiktok videos <laughs> but uh, they also have uh, friends uh, so they go out uh, to the playground uh, i think children who are really really free uh, they have the opportunity to be to, to really uh, feel uh, the the feeling to to be a child, you know, to, they I think they're uh, they're children for a longer period of time than the schooled kids because um, children at school they have uh, many uh, duties, many chores, uh, and uh, uh, it feels like these children are really free. So we just kind of have a flow with our day. The kids like to sleep in. They get up and take care of their own breakfast, um, which is usually around lunchtime. And then uh, they just spend the day doing the things that they're interested in doing, playing video games or watching YouTube videos, practicing their instruments. Um, we usually come together for dinner to, um, at the same time. And then because of the other activities that they have, we spend most of the evenings going to um, soccer or Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or any of the different things that they do. And then they stay up late and <laughs> talk to their friends and that's pretty much it. We talk about homeschooling and I gotta admit, Lou, I'm starting to warm up to the idea. It's, it, you know, it, it seems like logic the more we talk about it. And I'm like, okay, Lou, I get you. But you told me we're gonna talk about something that just sounds almost like illegal. Unschooling. Unschooling. That it's just that, sounds... That prefix, un, like not. I didn't know like that was an actual thing. Unschooling? I'd say that unschooling is like self-directed, learner-led homeschooling. Like homeschooling is just school and teachers and tests at home. Unschooling is learning in your own way. Oftentimes the parents are more involved in like saying what the kid has to learn and in unschooling the parents are more of a supporting role instead of a, a leading role and it's it's trying to balance out the hierarchy so that um, the child or the young person is the one that has the power over what they want to do with their time instead of the parents dictating it like homeschooling might. Someone missed the wastebasket. Tossing old papers without watching where they fall is a careless habit. That's better, Jimmy. You unschool, but like, how will you learn? Yeah, I really... how, how will you learn to read? Yeah, I really I, hate um, that. <laughs> I found learning to read really easy when Same I was here. growing up because because Same I didn't here. learn to read when I was six 
but I like I did pick it up like over time when I was ready because Mm -hmm. I've like told everyone this like there's always been words around me like there's signs and like there's things even in the house and on my like or on the tv or like there's anything. one right there's, there on the window yeah like there's there's <laughs> words everywhere so I found it really easy to learn to read because it was mm-hmm. just like always around yeah me. so the eight-year-old um we found uh originally initially it was not at all interested in reading um and we ended up like we watched a movie about dragons um again because I was exhausted and couldn't do anything but you know maybe do my work and watch movies with the kids and all of a sudden she was super interested in dragons and she started drawing dragons like obsessively and like just she couldn't stop herself from drawing dragons which is wonderful to see um and I think also very therapeutic during a pandemic, you know, creativity is, is super good for you. Um, so that was awesome, but still not reading. And somebody in the unschooling online community mentioned, you know, getting something kind of pretty easy, but on topic. And I bought a, um, one graphic novel about dragons and I didn't give it to her. I just set it on the table and, um, she picked it up and I can talk more about that, but that just, like opened this whole world and it's still dragons a year and a half later everything is she's right right now she's doing an embroidery thing that's a dragon and we've all heard of homeschooling but what about unschooling it's a growing new movement that pretty much lets kids do whatever they want during the day instead of going to school now i have to admit i have a bias in this i think it sounds crazy but juju chang went out and reported this story and juju you did find some people who think this is a very powerful way help kids learn. Absolutely, and they tend to be well-meaning parents, absolutely, but it looks and it feels a lot like playing hooky, to be honest. The premise is let a child follow his or her own passions and the learning will come from the doing, but most educators say there is often a huge gap between the utopian ideal and reality. None of my uh, extended family was very supportive, so I was used to all of the bullying and pressure for learning things. So I was just, I just ignored it. Um, mm-hmm. But I did feel the pressure and I would never tell someone that I was on school. That was a big no, no for me. Um, mm-hmm. if, if anyone ever asked, I would say that was homeschooled. And I would try and continue that conversation, you know, as a homeschooler for as long as I could until I was finally like, okay, fine, I'm unschooled. Because once people start getting into the nitty gritty of it, it's, it's hard to convince them that you're homeschooled when you aren't. That was never something that I enjoyed doing. I wish I could have told more people I was on school, but I had a lot of people that were very, very rude about being homeschooled or unschooled to me. Um, I would say I was unschooled and then they would ask if they needed to call the police because I was being neglected. And I was like, I'm not being mm-hmm. neglected. Please don't do that. <laughs> something. something that I dislike that I haven't heard a ton, but I've heard a couple times before is people saying that like due to me being unschooled I'm not exactly smart like I don't know anything I'm I'm a dumb person uh when in reality I'm learning things every day (laughs) like I could be scrolling through social media and then I'll learn a new word or learn a new phrase or something just right and like especially when we were younger like I said we did a lot of classes and stuff Mm -hmm. and also before COVID Mm -hmm. um and like a lot of uh the subjects we wanted to learn like science and math we we worked on that a lot and we would do stuff at home if we wanted to learn that so it was like it's open if you don't want to learn something you don't have to like if you do want to learn something like science we always had an interest in then we could and we would watch videos on it or make things and our parents would help us with that. Mm -hmm. Did you ever listen to the sounds that come from the rooms? Some rooms sound like this. What's happening inside? Over the past um, three years or so, the amount of travel that we've been able to do as a family was only possible because we're an unschooling family. Uh, We've been able to take the kids so far to 31 states plus Washington, D.C. Two of 
we've done two very long road trips. Well, long to us. Um, one was almost three weeks and one was two weeks. Um, we've gone on numerous cruises to the Caribbean and Mexico. Um, we've traveled, like I said, all over the country and it's giving us um, a goal. Like we have a map with the states marked that the kids have been to and we start playing, we plan trips based on the new places that we want to see. Um, so just having those family adventures has only been possible because we're unschoolers. We like to travel and we definitely wouldn't have been able to do that um, with them in traditional schooling. So sometimes we'll go on the road for you know, two or three weeks. Um, we will learn about different uh, geographical locations. We'll learn about different climates. We'll see the different cultures. Um, I also don't believe that we would have as close of a relationship as we do. Um, they are able to express to me their needs and without um, a feeling of needing to conform. Um, and I think we're also really close and, and I can help foster their friendships um, and give them support. So I think being outside of a traditional uh, brick and mortar school, our kids have really grown with their interpersonal relationship skills and um, I don't think that would happen <laughs> if they were gone eight hours a day. Helping to make school time more of one is part of being a good citizen. I think people do have this idea that it's very individualistic um, and very each person or each family for themselves. And ideally, I don't think that's the way it should be. Um, that to me, it really, it, it really like, again, ideally should be the thing that's, that's rooted in community and that involves a lot of people. Um, that is not about being isolated and it's not about doing things yourself. It's, uh, it's about finding sort of your own path with the, the support of others and, you know, being really plugged in to, uh, to the communities around you. I think everyone should have the option to unschool in a supporting and like safe and involved community. I don't think everyone should be forced to unschool because I'm not for forcing people to learn in a way they don't want to learn or be in a way they don't want to be. But I think forcing everyone to go to school is not great at all. And that unschooling should definitely be an option for everyone that is a, a respected and good option. Tommy always has trouble getting to school on time. He's late more often than early. There's the school up ahead. No need to hurry. Can't make it on time anyway. Um, I would say not a fan of school. Compulsory education is inhumane, mean, ineffective, would not recommend. Um, um I, this might sound really rude, but school people are like, sticky and gross they are um, because because schools are sticky and gross this is a good room isn't it a good room to work in to learn in do you know some things you can do to help make your room a quiet place for work 